Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode here in a new week of Cat Shorts as we take a look at big ideas of the Christian faith and put them into small packages walking along the way with Martin Luther's small catechism, which is why we call this Cat Shorts. Um, we have just begun talking about this special, our word for it is sacrament, but this sort of moment, uh, this, this, this meal, this, this event, this ritual thing that Christians have done in some form or another for 2,000 years that is sometimes called Holy Communion, or uh, the Eucharist, or the Lord's Supper, or the Sacrament of the Altar. There's a whole bunch of names. And today we're going to start digging into the layers of meaning that go on um, in in the background when Jesus first celebrates, or does this with his disciples. So um, get your Martin Luther hat, or your uh, favorite 16th century reformer uh, headgear equivalent, and let's have a quick conversation. Um, maybe first we should talk a little bit about um, how... Our holidays in our contemporary American culture work or don't work, and um, some of the problems maybe that we have with our kinds of holidays. Like, for example, um, it's a pet peeve of mine how many of our civic and national holidays have basically become um, excuses to have sales at mattress stores and department stores and things like that. Could anybody tell what actually the, the story behind Memorial Day is? Yeah, maybe if I squint hard enough. I, yeah, it has something to do with remembering soldiers maybe who died in a war, and we forget that it actually goes back to the armistice that ended World War One, and uh, it was in particular about the end of the, the First World War, and to remember the sacrifice of those who died there. And for a long time, it was called Decoration Day. It was the day for decorating the graves. But since then, we sort of morphed it into just to remember, I guess, all the soldiers who have ever died in any war. And even in the back of our mind, we sort of kind of forget that and just go, well, you know, it's when, like, summer unofficially starts. Everybody jokes it's when you can start wearing white pants uh, and get ready for summer and everybody starts doing their summer activities. You know, Memorial Day. That's sort of the unofficial beginning of summer. And we've forgotten that there's a story way, 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 way back that has to do with the end of a war and those who gave their lives in order to stop uh, the, the, the Great War, or those who, who fought in that war and lost their lives. Seems to me like a lot of our holidays are like that. We could make a similar case for um, for Veterans Day and people sort of treat that as just sort of a, a day to have a day off of school or to have a sale at the store or Labor Day. I mean, pick your holiday. In ancient Israel, the central story and the central holiday that reminded the people who they were was called Passover. And the beauty of Passover was that it was designed not to be forgettable. That you wouldn't forget what the story was, in part because it wasn't just a day off of work. We sort of treat holidays as just, well, it's a day you don't have to go to work. But in ancient Israel, to celebrate a festival like Passover was a reenactment almost, that year after year after year, people would celebrate and remember the story of how God had set them free from slavery in Egypt. And the way they remembered the story was part of how they celebrated. You would eat the same meal that was part of the Passover meal and tell the story again. Our ancestors were enslaved in Egypt under Pharaoh and he was cruel and he worked us hard and it was rotten, and we cried out to God, and God raised up a deliverer, and God sent the plagues against Pharaoh, and God finally struck down the firstborn and saved us, and we ate the lamb, and the lamb's blood went on the doorpost. This whole saga of how God had saved the people, rescued them, brought them from slavery into freedom, from sure and certain death to life, and from the hope uh, to the hope of being in the promised land, all that story was re reshared, rehearsed, you could say, every year as faithful Israelites, as faithful Judeans, and later after the exile as they came to understand them as the Jews, would retell the story of the Passover, of the exodus from Egypt, and it went even down to, we're going to eat special bread, flat bread, because it reminds us when our ancestors left Egypt, they didn't even have time to wait for the bread dough to rise. They had to uh, eat bread quickly. They ate the roasted lamb because the lamb's blood had gone on the doorpost. And they drank wine that was this reminder of the sweetness of what would happen when they one day got to the promised land. These are the elements that are on the table when Jesus celebrates the Passover, the festival of unleavened bread, with his disciples on his last night with them. 
So part of what's going on, there's other layers, we'll get to them too, but part of what's going on at Holy Communion is Jesus taking this ancient meal, this ancient holiday, and holding on to the story. He's not saying, get rid of all that stuff about Pharaoh and slavery. I'm going to give it a new meaning. It's just going to be a mattress sale. But Jesus says, just like all your lives long, my disciples, you've heard this celebration be about being set free from slavery and being set free, uh, being moved from death to life. Now I'm taking this same bread from Passover. I'm taking this cup that's on the table and I'm going to imbue them with a new layer of meaning because Jesus sees what he's doing at the cross as a new Exodus event, as a new kind of a Passover, as a new covenant, which is why Jesus uses that language, right? So, Part of what happens at Holy Communion is this act of remembering what God has done for us. Just like for centuries, for millennia, the people of Israel remembered the story of how God had set them free. And that remembering wasn't just sort of a recollection of a past fact, but a remembering that brings the past into the present. So that in traditional um, Jewish prayers at Passover, there's, there's this sort of blurring of the tenses, that it's not just this happened a long time ago, but tonight is the night and we are retelling the story as if we are the ones being brought out of slavery ourselves. Jesus talks about his own death and resurrection, what happens at the cross as a new Passover event. And when Christians celebrate this story, Part of what we are doing is remembering in that deep sense what Jesus did for us. We said before, the two most important words in all of Holy Communion, according to our older brother in the faith, Martin Luther, are for you. And part of what that for you is not just here's a piece of bread for you, but Jesus did this. Jesus laid down his life, gave up his life at the cross for you, just like God saved the people and brought them free out of Egypt. And the message was this gift, this freedom is for you. Part of what we do at communion is to remember what Jesus has done. There's more to be said about what happens in the present and dare we say it, what the future has to say about Holy Communion. But for right now, let's just be centered in remembering in that active sense, not forgetting the story of what God has done for us. Because in remembering that story, we are reminded who and whose we are. So pick up with us next time here on Cat Shorts.